Christmas Day, the Hubbards embarked on the 24-hour mammoth flight to the land down under, where we visited Sean's family and some of the most popular tourist attractions in and around Sydney. Last week, we visited Scenic World, where I got a little bit motion sick. And we had to deal with some very interesting policies. Go downstairs and join the queue, and I'll let you through when they get up here. Job's worth. Oh my god, isn't she? <laughs> Hello my wonderful friends and welcome back to another video. This is the last video in my Australia series. I really hope that you have enjoyed it so far. In this video I thought we would do a little bit of a roundup, have a look at some of the highlights and have a look at how accessible is Australia becoming. What I found different, what I found good. But today we are at the Hydro Majestic up in the Blue Mountains where we're going to be having afternoon tea and we're going to be looking out across the mega long valley although as you can probably see it's quite cloudy and unseasonably cold today it's absolutely beautiful out here so i'm going to show you around and we'll check out the disability access as well the Hydro Majestic in the Blue Mountains is about a two hour drive west of Sydney. It spans one kilometre and boasts a very unusual mix of Edwardian and Art Deco architecture. It opened in 1904 and was a hotspot for Sydney's social elite, who used to visit to escape the suppressing heat of the city. After a recent five-year, $30 million renovation, the Hydro Majestic really lives up to its name. It includes a luxury boutique-style hotel, formal and informal dining, and one of the best afternoon teas I have ever had, all with the most spectacular money-can't-buy views out over the mega long valley. Look, we've got a nice um, little ramp there, almost like a zero-entry in. Disney videos. She must look really grown up to some of you. I know. Here's my lovely sister-in-law and <laughs> Sean's niece. <laughs> We've got level access through here. Hi. 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 Oh my goodness, this looks amazing. <laughs> Go around this way. Say hello. <laughs> Ready? Yeah. Ready for the view? <laughs> Look at So good, it's so so yummy. It's good, wasn't it, guys? It was yeah. very yummy. Such a lovely, special thing to do if you're up here in the Blue Mountains. I highly recommend it. And the accessibility was so good. But you know what, Michelle? We forgot to check out the toilets. Oh, would you like to go and do that? Oh, no, someone else will have to do that and let us know. But considering how accessible everything was and signposted and really well thought out, I can't imagine there wouldn't be a toilet. No, they were in the Winter Garden restaurant. But um, you have to go into oh, the restaurant. Which is where we were. Which is where we were. Yeah, okay. Maybe we'll have to go back and check another day. Definitely a thumbs up from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Daisy, where's oh, your thumb? Oh. Hey. <laughs> I really wanted to share this little bit of footage with you. Daisy and I had a fantastic time with my sister-in-law and Daisy's cousin, Katie. They treated us very kindly to afternoon tea here at the Hydro. And visiting the Hydro, I would highly recommend. It's all been refurbished and the access was on point. I'm gonna catch the light rail now. If you follow me over on my socials, then you may have already seen the light rail. And this is something again that I really wanted to include in my YouTube video today. Now the light rail is 
more of like a tram system around the city. It really shouldn't be compared to Australia's network of rail across the country. It's not like that at all, but it is brand new and it is completely wheelchair accessible. I love that I was able to just to freely get on, get off with autonomy, and it made life really easy. Definitely beats having to push yourself up the hills. Nice accessible up to the platform. Accessible carriages are marked with a silver symbol on the floor. The network currently consists of three passenger routes, with a fourth one in the pipeline to the west in Parramatta, which is due to open next year. I absolutely loved how easy and accessible it was. It sure beats having to push yourself around the city. All you have to do is use your bank card to tap on and tap off, which acts as your ticket, similar to what you would have seen in our video featuring Sydney's ferries. Priority spaces are marked out clearly for wheelchair this users. This light rail trans system comprises of 42 stops and a system length of 24.7 kilometers, making it the second largest light rail network in Australia behind the Tran Network in Melbourne. That was good. A little bit hairy, but I think if you were here for a long time, you'd get used to it. But really nice and easy and much better than having to wheel all the way up the hill or down the hill. Speaking of Australia's rail network, one thing that we did notice on our way up to the Blue Mountains is that most of the train stations are having a little bit of reworks done to make sure that they are more accessible for people with disabilities. Here at most train stations now, they have accessible lifts to the footbridge to get over to the other side of the platforms. Doors closing. Please mind the doors. This is amazing and I don't think I've seen as many lifts in a train station um, as here in Australia. In the... Um... Doors opening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I haven't seen accessibility like this in train stations in the UK. Right. You can go straight out doors across opening. the bridge. And then down over the other side. This station has three lifts so I can access every single platform without having to rely on anyone else. And now I'm here on the street level, ready to get some coffee. <laughs> we only visited a few of the railway stations, but I do believe this is something that they are looking to roll out across New South Wales and maybe even parts of Australia as well. Did you know Australians believe dealing with climate change is a more important foreign policy goal than Americans, according to a recent polling by the United States Study Centre? 52% of Americans think their actions influence climate change, whereas 60% of Australians believe global warming is a serious issue. Last year, the Australian House of Representatives passed the country's first climate change legislation in over a decade to cut 42% of greenhouse gas emissions and a reduction to net zero by 2050. However, the US also looks like it's now on track to meet its target of net zero emission economy by no later than 2050. <laughs> when you think of Australia, what do you think of? Comment it down below. I think for me, it's beaches, kangaroos and barbecues. Um, and obviously you can't go to Australia without visiting a beach. Um, but then when you think beach and wheelchair, um, beach and disability, it's not the greatest mix. However, I was really, really pleasantly surprised to see that the Sydney beaches are becoming a lot more accessible. Bondi Beach 
actually blew me away with how accessible it has become. I have visited it over the years a few times, starting in 2005, and since 2005, comparing it now, it is so much better. And I did a little bit of research, and the great accessibility on Bondi Beach that you are able to enjoy 365 days a year is possibly thanks to someone called Kate Swain, who in 2020, I believe, started a change.org petition to get Bondi Beach to be more accessible. Now, as you may have seen from my previous video on Bondi Beach, they have sand mats to push your wheelchair down onto the beach. They have a more accessible wheelchair ramp down to the beach. They also have beach wheelchairs. They have a few different types of beach wheelchairs that are kept in beach wheelchair lockers. And they also have wheelchair accessible showers. And they also have a changing places as well. Thank you so much. So wow, this is a pretty good, amazing, accessible bathroom here. We've got changing spaces, a hoist, we've got the shower and the toilet, and a really nice automatic door, which opens out nice and easy. Zero entry here, and then it should automatically lock. That leads me really nicely over to toilets. As a disabled person, toilets are one of the most important things for me um, in terms of access. It's something that I tend to uh, live my life around or plan my life around. Because if there isn't an accessible toilet, then we could be in a little bit of a sticky situation. Know what I mean? So having an accessible toilet is a must for me. And one thing I did notice is that the toilets are really nice and accessible for my needs. I know that some people don't find them as accessible as others, um, but they, they were nice and accessible for myself. One thing that I did notice was a lot of the accessible toilets in public places such as the Westfield shopping centres had really lovely automatic sliding doors. Love those doors. I wish we had those in the UK. Yeah, they're see through, you know. Don't worry, Sean is just being Sean and he is joking here. They're not see through. <laughs> I really would love to see more automatic doors on accessible toilets going forward in the future. I know that we do have them over here, but I would definitely like to see some more. What do you think? Another thing I noticed, uh, which I hadn't noticed before, I don't know when it was introduced, was the MLAC key. But the MLAC key is something which is very similar to our radar key system. Another thing that I noticed at Bondi Beach and that you will have picked up on as well is that they have changing places. There are currently around 248 changing places toilets available across Australia. Another thing that really stood out to me was how accessible the bushwalks are becoming in Australia. And it's only a very recent thing that seem to have started in 2020. You may have seen in one of my videos, I talk all about the accessible bushwalks that we went on in this video, and I was absolutely blown away with how accessible and how lovely and new the makeover on Echo Point was. Again, it happened in around 2020, so it is very, very new. It was so lovely to be able to stay with my family, I was able to access and get closer to the three sisters and really embrace the culture. I was able to see everything and just, you know, be included. And I think that's what's important. We just want to be included and we don't want to be separated from our family. Go downstairs and join the queue and I'll let you through when they get up here. That was one thing that I found quite difficult in Australia is they are starting to make headway in um, accessibility, but I think in terms of um, attitudes and education around disability. I think more work needs to be done from what I have experienced and what some of my friends have also told me as well. Job's worth. Oh my god, isn't she? <laughs> as you know, when we went to Scenic World, they really didn't have any um, accommodations that I could see uh, for people with maybe invisible disabilities. You would have seen that Sean and I, we had to be separated in the queuing system. We've had to come downstairs. So I've got to wait for them to come all the way back up. A bit weird, but I don't know why we didn't stay together. And there was really a lack of understanding and empathy when it came to um, the attitudes there. 
Someone went to go and get food and it's like, no, no, I don't have time for that, no, no. <laughs> I'm not even now, they're not coming on. <laughs> One of the things that I was most concerned about in going to Australia was actually getting to Australia itself. It's a blooming long way from England. It is a good 24 hour flight. Um, and what is it, like a 12 hour time difference? It's hard going for any non-disabled person, but factor in disabilities and all of those kind of things, it's a very anxiety inducing experience. You know, I have my wheelchair to worry about, I have access onto the plane to worry about, access into the toilet to worry about. I also have my physical health to worry about with pain and things like that. I was worried about getting blood clots, I was worried about getting sore. I'm not gonna lie, my feet looked a little bit strange after the flight. Overall, I couldn't fault Qantas. I'm sure a lot of you saw my flying with a disability um, video. I highly recommend them. They were absolutely fantastic and you can really tell that the crew have had disability and inclusion training. I feel incredibly lucky and incredibly blessed um, that I was able to go to Australia um, and visit Sean's family, my in-laws, Daisy's family. We loved going out there, being with them, you know, and experiencing everything that we experienced. I actually did think that this would be my last time going to Australia because of how long and how difficult I found the flight. Um, but Qantas just made it so much easier for me. I don't think this will be my last time and I really hope that we get to go back very soon. If you have any questions, then please feel free to drop them down below. If not, then please make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I look forward to seeing you in my next one. Thank you. Bye.